Hello everyone and welcome to my physics tutorial on solving an AP problem. Today we will be doing a Physics C Mechanics and it's from 1984 problem number one. Okay, so the question states, an amusement park ride consists of a rotating vertical cylinder with rough canvas walls. The floor is initially about halfway up the cylinder wall as shown above. After the ride, rider has entered and the cylinder is rotating sufficiently fast, the floor is dropped down, yet the rider does not slide down. The rider has mass of 50 kilograms. The radius R of the cylinder is 5 meters. The angular velocity of the cylinder when rotating is 2 radians per second. And the coefficient of static friction between the, rate, the rider and the wall of the cylinder is 0 0.6. So for part A, the question is, on the diagram below, draw and identify the forces on the rider when the system is rotating and the floor has dropped down. So we have this person here, and this is his center of mass. And at this point of contact, there is a normal force pointed to the right. There's gravity pointed down and up there is a force of friction. So these two are perpendicular or parallel and of equal magnitude. So the rider does not accelerate downwards or upwards. Now for part B. The question says, calculate the centripetal force on the rider when the cylinder is rotating and state what provides that force. So for now we will use the centripetal force where it is equal to the mass times velocity squared over our radius where the velocity is equal to the radius times omega Make that capital R or we can do the centripetal force is equal to the mass times the radius I'm sorry mass times radius times omega squared and we will use this method so now we plug it in our numbers we have centripetal force is equal to 50 kilograms times 5 meters times 2 radians per second and that is squared so we have the centripetal force is equal to 1000 newtons and in our free body diagram this would be the normal force since that is at the center of the, the merry-go-round or the ride since he is here and that points to the center of the ride this is over here if this is the center that is the only uh, vector pointing toward it the only force towards the center of the circle so that would be the normal force would be the centripetal force. And now for problem C, it's uh, the question says calculate the upward force that keeps the rider from falling when the floor is dropped down and state what provides that force. So we have the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero and the force that we'll use is friction 
which is equal to the force of gravity. So we use the mass times gravity. And simply we just plug in our two numbers, which is 50 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So we have a force of friction is equal to 490 newtons. <clears throat> and now for part D, it says at the same rotational speed would a rider of twice the mass slide down the wall? And explain your answer. So the way I did it was I used the force of friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. I just plugged in the centripetal force instead of the normal force. So I have force of friction is equal to 0 0.6 times the centripetal force we calculated from part B, which is 1000 newtons. And we have 1200 newtons. Oh, sorry. That is not right. Force of friction is equal to. Oh, it was two times that. But I'll show you my work so you don't get confused. Force of friction is equal to. Um, 0 0.6 times 2 times 50 kilograms which is twice the mass and that is 100 kilograms and that times 5 meters times 2 radians per second squared so the force of friction with twice the mass will be 1200 newtons as you can see anyone can make this mistake like I just did so be careful when you do this you, you must do use twice the mass you should learn from my mistake so the answer to this question is no since um, the force of friction will still be greater than the force of gravity no matter what mass the person is and that's a safety precaution from the ride because the ride would never exist you can think about it in that way but also conceptually you can think of this way where you have the coefficient of static friction times the mass times the radius times omega squared will always be greater than the mass times gravity and this we got from uh, force of friction is equal to force of gravity <coughs> and we have this coefficient of static friction times radius times omega squared will always be greater than gravity. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it helped and good luck on the AP exams. Thanks for watching.